An Arab American Uber driver was harassed in Astoria, Queens. Fortunately, he did capture it on video. Let's take a look. An Arab terrorist. I don't care, bro. Video. You're a loser. You don't even from here. You. You and your family, you terrorist. Video all you want. You're an Arab. You're a loser. Sand. Exactly. Video. What is that gonna do? What is that gonna do? Trump is president. So you can kiss your visa goodbye, scumbag. They'll deport you soon. Don't worry, terrorist. Oh my God, I'm so scared. What you stealing? Nah, so probably not the best encounter uh, that the man had that day. So the recipient of the verbal attacks was Chris Cody's Uber driver. Cody told the Washington Post the incident on Crescent Street in the Astoria neighborhood in Queens happened Thursday morning just before the Uber driver picked up Cody in Manhattan. And because Cody um, was able to speak Arabic, they, he got into a little bit of a conversation and his Uber driver said, man, I just had the, you know, the worst... Uh, incident right before I picked you up and he Cody said what happened and he showed him the video and uh, Cody said that Mohammed was initially hesitant but that he was able to persuade him to send the video to him so Cody could share it on social media he said Mohammed was unsure about reporting the incident to police and does not want his full name to be known which is why we're hearing about the story from a secondhand person now Cody shared the video on Facebook and it really went viral um, in fact uh, you know, the New York State Senator Michael Gianaris actually responded to it, just saying that in this community we don't tolerate that sort of thing. So he has spoken out. That's how viral this story went. And it's just worth noting before we get into the discussion that reports of intimidation and harassments have spiked since Election Day. The Southern Poverty Law Center has tallied 701 such incidents as of Friday. The Hate Watch Group, however, cautions that not all incidents have direct references to Trump and not every report could be independently verified. This group has tracked 27 anti-Trump incidents as of Friday. Mm -hmm. So let's just be aware of what's going on. But obviously there's so much unrest that we are seeing. I, I think it's good whenever this stuff comes out that it's documented. I think that's really important. So I think that's great of Mohammed. But obviously he didn't even want his name to be known. He was hesitant to even let the story get out there. This is such a scary time for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, it, when I look at stories like this, I always sort of ask myself, what would I have done in this situation? Were I um, witness to the actual incident or were I his next Uber passenger? Um, and I'm wondering you, Ben, do you think about that sort of thing? I, I just don't know how we're supposed to handle that. I think this guy, who I guess spoke Arabic to yes, uh, uh, the Chris Cody, uh, did exactly the right thing, which is sort of, you know, talk to the guy. And uh, you mentioned he spoke Arabic. That's So they were, you know, he was able to, to ease his mind and get a hold of the tape and then share it. And that's the best way to do it. It's just, it's an, it's, a, it's an alarming time already. It's potentially more alarming. And when the cast of Hamilton, the story we did in the first hour, when they speak out, and Mike Pence, by and large, handled the situation well. Uh, you know, he was fine. He was fine, uh, yeah. Uh, but when the president-elect and, and his minions, from Newt Gingrich to, to uh, Laura Ingram, all straight down the line, what, to uh, Michelle Malkin, when they condemn what the cast of Hamilton did and talk about it, and Trump says it's hostile, hostile. Mm -hmm. Trump and Gingrich talked about it was hostile. There literally was nothing, it was anti-hostile. There was booing and the cast said, stop booing. And they referred to Pence as sir and expressed their concerns and said, hope that he would address it and hear them. I literally don't know how it could be more respectful. You could make an argument that it was the wrong place. Some people, even on the left, are making it that it was the wrong place. I don't think those people were going to be in Mike Pence's presence any yeah. of the time, so it strikes me as the, the right place. But image, what it was definitely not was hostile. And when Trump calls it hostile, and then there's this cacophony of voices saying it's hostile, you were sending a message to the guy who pulled up next to Mohammed uh, that it's okay to say these things. That is, at no point did Trump say, you know, could have said, hey, I heard that. Interest, uh, we heard what you said to Mike Pence. I just want to reassure people I'm president for all America. That's it. And I'll be a very good president. I'll be the very best president for yeah, all he America. Could have even, yeah, he could have even trumped it up. He right, could have totally, been like, that's right. I'll be so great for all people, so <laughs> great. Right, right, right. That's all you got to say, and then it really kind of isn't a story. Mm -hmm. But instead, you suggest, and I go back and forth as to whether this Hamilton story is a sort of a, 
uh, trivial little little uh, uh, pop culture one-off, right? Or whether it is representative of of how these guys are going to react to dissent. Yeah. And I fear that it's the latter. So, Francis, do you agree that the actions of, I would say, let's say Donald Trump and his, I want lackeys, I don't know, I'm trying to think of, yeah. I guess cabinet, sure, um, is emboldening these people, or is it just mm -hmm. sort of, is there really not a direct causality there? Because he, he did say on camera, stop it, if people are being violent, people are acting out, stop it, he said it directly into the camera. Do you think that that is going very far, or no. are people responding directly to the tone that Donald Trump has set as president-elect? No, those people probably never even, they, they blurred that out. They, they, all they had, they heard what they had to hear, which was the things he was saying during his campaign. And then once he got elected, they probably haven't even listened to him after they got elected. They just felt yeah. like, we won, we got it. Now mm -hmm. we can be, and I'm not saying the majority, because by the way, don't take my rationality when it comes to all Trump fans as me not gonna condemn this bullshit, because this is, this is what you have to condemn. And it's not, this is what I keep saying, is that it's not that me condemning it is, 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 taint, is painting everyone with the bold brush that this is all Trump fans. No, it's me condemning it with the hope that some people that I know and close to me that are Trump fans will condemn it as well. Because mm -hmm. that's where I, again, where I think this change comes. It's not gonna come from Donald Trump or his cronies or anyone in his cabinet condemning this. People calling out there, oh, Trump, uh, Donald Trump needs to denounce this. What is that gonna do? These people have already got all the involvement they need. They've already felt the, the, the power that they have suddenly got their voice in this world and that they, they are gonna be that, that, that force that just continues to be the ultimate force of everyone else. So they, what I'm saying is that this is, the, there's one thing absolutely condemning this and, and, and highlighting, just as you said, even further, 67% hate crimes have increased against uh, anti-Muslim hate crimes have increased. In 2014, 2015, hate crimes in general were up by 7% according to the FBI. These are simple facts. People are feeling that they can voice their hatred more often now because of Donald Trump. That's that's not even arguable. I'm not gonna listen to your argument if you tell me that Donald Trump hasn't allowed for this spike, but it doesn't get us anywhere when I say to people that are all Trump fans, you caused this. Because therefore, the chances of them and then and the next time that they encounter something like this or they maybe witness it, the chances of them speaking out and being like, hey, that's not what my party represents. I don't, I don't stand for that, which you never know, could influence a mind or two, are very, very small. So I just don't see the, the sense of going that back and forth because we see it at the moment. Something happens there at Hamilton, everyone on the left is saying that this is absolutely right, condemning Mike Pence, and I thought they handled the situation very well. The Hamilton cast spoke so eloquently and they handled it in the most, I don't think you could put it in perspective how good they, they did it in comparison to how other people have protested. But Donald Trump immediately sides with the other side of it. There's this immediate divide. There's no one in the middle trying to build that bridge. There's no one trying to connect it. So let's talk a little bit about the, the Trump voters that you referenced, Francis. The Trump mm -hmm. voters that, were, you know, oh, they're not racist. We know them. They're friends of the family. They don't mean this. They don't, you know, the, yes, they aligned with a president that is endorsed by the KKK, but they're not that way. Mm -hmm. Do you think that when they hear stories like this, or when they see stories like this, they see these videos that are circulating on Facebook that do go viral, do you think it gives them pause? Do you think it causes them to reflect on their vote, or is it just sort of water under the bridge? Oh, well, the election's over, you know, whatever. I mean, I, that's um, what I'm wondering. I'm wondering if what, these what people the, that are sort of, um, that that were sort of the, the not the huge Trump supporters, but the ones that did cast their vote for him. Do you think they think about the sort of the causality here? Truthfully, if you want my answer, I don't even think that they might want to take a pause, but I don't think they would even voice most of them that I know would never, wouldn't even voice that this maybe came of concern to them voting for Trump because a lot of them that I knew never even voiced that they voted for Trump. No one really knew. They were very quiet about it because they were scared that they'd be shamed at even voicing their would concern. Would they intervene if it's, they were it, to witness this? If they were witness, I would really hope that, so. That's, and I, I think, would the question. We need that. to talk about human decency Yeah, here. of course. And, and, I, and I would hope that they would. And I feel like it would be my job and under, if I understood that they were looking to swing towards a Trump vote, this is before the election, that I would look at cases like this, which happened before Trump was elected, to say this is what your candidate is gonna uphold, like these people are gonna uphold his values and speak out as if they were him doing this. And I would try to sway it as like, here's the statistics, here's the rise in hate crime. I know you may feel that economically you're gonna be better off with this. And I would try <laughs> in an educational sense to try and talk them out of it because that's what the way I've been taught here. I've embrace so many different cultures and I try to understand. But 
again, guys, we're talking about people here in Los Angeles that are mixed in the different cultures. Like if you're going to speak to someone in Wisconsin or someone in Ohio who thinks that immigrants are going to steal all their jobs and are probably well, never even run into it. this happened in New York City. It. Exactly. That's where it was surprising to me. It's going to happen all over. There's going to be people that are going to take this example as a means to say, I can say and do what I want because my Trump's my president and I'm going to do these things. But it's not just on us, on the left, to condemn it. I think it's, again, I keep saying it, if there's people out there that are tired of being shamed for voting for Donald Trump, speak out against this. Yeah, if I, would, I completely friend, agree. Speak out against this. If, 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 if you we're wrong about Donald Trump, or sexist, then the Trump voters that uh, do not believe, that, do not buy into the xenophobia, among other things, among so many other terrible things, they are, need to be the ones to speak out. And that's what we're not seeing. And that's what makes me so frustrated. Because again, like I said at the top of the story, I imagined what would I do if I was put in this position? How would I act? How would I respond? How would I comfort this person? Mm -hmm. And I, I just hope that the people that did vote for Donald Trump that sort of fall into the category that you were alluding to would also ask themselves those same questions. How would I respond? I voted for Trump, but I don't have hate in my heart. Yeah. Um, the the, the reason because I know that there are yeah. people that truly believe that. The reason why I'm a little different on this, because I, I, I like that we're having this back and forth, because this is what was needed, right? The reason I'm indifferent to this is because I, well, I look back in the last 12 months, and these examples came up before Trump was president, and what did we do? How did we handle these situations? Rather than being like, see, this, this is maybe what a Donald Trump presidency is going to look like, or this is what's going to happen. Instead, what did we do? And I'm not saying we in terms of everyone. There might be people that are different. But more often than not, we said... This is what you are if you vote for Donald Trump. This right here. You are this whether you speak out or not. This is you. And that is, that is it. That's, we had a role to play in this. And we relied on Hillary being the better of two evils, which simply was not good enough. Simply was not good enough. And rather than take accountability for that and maybe look as well as we protest against Donald Trump, I haven't seen anywhere near enough protest towards the DNC to make me feel comfortable that we really realize how much we play the role in this as well. The Young Turks isn't just us, it's also you guys. You make this show possible, and we want to thank you for it, and we want to grow together. We want to be too strong. TYTnetwork.com slash join. Let's do it.